Vault here. Just wanted to bring you in on how I managed to fly my drone so close to Port and Down. When it's got all these stay out areas. Look, this big thing is known as a military air traffic zone, an MATZ, or MATS as we call it in the pilot fraternity. And these big things here are known as airfields. Middle Wallop, Old Serum, it's a private field, and Boscombe Down, which is military, Middle Wallop, which is military. But Middle Wallop's also got a mats too, look. Pink mats, pink mats. And these little things off the end are known as stubs, okay? Now, do you have to have permission to fly in a mats? Well, it turns out, no, you don't. And this is discussed about in Pilot Magazine, where somebody is saying, if I want to cut through part of a mats, um, I do not need permission, le permission legally to fly through it. And this guy's asking the question, am I right? Because I seem to remember learning that when I was learning to fly. Well, I learned that too, which is how I come to know about it. Um, and basically, do you need to ask? Pilots wishing to penetrate a mats are requested requested not mandatory requested to absorb observe the following procedures so yes it is true that you can plunder through a mats without talking to anyone on the radio or requesting any permission yeah but however if you have got a radio you can ask for a mats penetration service which means that at least they know where you are and what you're doing but you're not required to do it it's not mandatory okay so, um, even if you call them up and ask for permission and they deny it, you could still say, well, I'm doing it anyway, although that would be a bit ignorant, really, wouldn't it? Um, but what you can generally do is you can either ring them up or you can tell them what you're doing just to make sure that there aren't any awkward uh, security incidents. And they're usually pretty good. And a lot of mats, including the uh, Boscombe Down one, let's come back onto it, this doesn't even open till 9am in the morning and it closes at 6 at night so even if you were to ring them up there wouldn't be anybody there to give you permission or take any notice so if you fly outside those hours you really 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 don't have to care but trust me or at least do your own research you don't have to care now this thing which is over port and down and there's port and down there's the bomb dumps that we flew that, that well i didn't fly over i was going to say that we we zoomed you over and uh, we drove down this road and we drove drove up this road and looked right to the bomb dumps which of these were the big buildings right and then we drove down the road and looked in this direction as we were passing and we saw them that way but where did i go i bet you're asking where did i go to do my drone footage because that's got to be a burning question, considering this is very much don't fly over it, you know, and it says you may raise security or privacy concerns because it's Port and Down after all, folks. I mean, are you really going to want to fly a drone over the top of Port and Down? Not even me is wanting to do that. If something went wrong, can you imagine how much trouble you'd be in? But anyway, but this area is a danger area now. These can become activated or deactivated at certain times. You'd have to look in a thing called a NOTAMS to check that out. And uh, I can pretty much imagine that this one is active all the time. Okay, so you're never, ever really going to get permission unless with special permission to fly in this area. But look, the mats comes over this area, but we can fly in this area. So we can fly in this round, but we can't fly in this round. So guess what? If we wanted to, we could fly in this field here, right next to the base, if we wanted to. And there isn't much that anyone could do about it. They might come and knock on your door, but when you tell them you know the law and you would point out, this is okay, that's not okay. So on this side of the fence, you could fly as close as you liked to Port and Down to get some footage. But hey, I'm not taking it those sorts of chances because I know what's going to probably happen and, and the questions will be asked, but I want to be extremely squeaky clean, even though I know the law. So guess where I flew from? Well, you haven't seen it yet, but you're going to see the footage pretty soon. But I went up this lane, parked about here, 
took my drone off from here. In fact, tell you tell you a lie, I parked here, and the dog walkers come up and down here, and there's quite a few park, cars park here. Um, and then I flew uh, along the edge of the base. But you haven't seen that footage yet, but you're just about to. So that gets you very close to be able to zoom in on this base, and it gets you a lot closer. Let's have a look at the, well, I can't show you the distances, but that distance there is not very far. So we're going to get some good footage in a minute. But if I wanted to, I could take off in this field here and get some absolutely stellar footage. Hmm. But what about the other place? Because you did see that I actually took off from somewhere down by here. Well, the road from Port and Down goes across the countryside here, comes out on a junction, and it goes this way to Salisbury, that way to uh, Andover. So if you come out of there and you park here, you'll see that as I took off, there was this nice looking house. We rise up in the air. And um, basically then, if you come in the field from this position, then you're not inside the zone. And if you go vertically, as you saw I did, it gives you a great shot over at the bunkers and over at Porton. And just because you're zooming in, it's where you actually take off and where you penetrate is the important thing, not necessarily what you're looking at and how clearly you're looking at it. So the zoom lens takes care of that. So those are the positions I took off from, but bear in mind, if one wanted to, you can fly in a mats without getting permission. Just don't fly into this bit because that would break the law because you would need permission to fly in controlled airspace. That's controlled airspace. This is a mats. It is advisory that you speak to a mats controller, but not mandatory. Okay. So, and most aircraft wouldn't really be flying at 400 feet near where you are. Just keep a good lookout. But that just gives you an idea. You can fly this close. And how crazy is that? Because look how close you would be. Look how close you would be to Porton Down. So all I'm going to say is nudge, nudge, wink, wink. <laughs> So here we go, right into the thick of it, and we are not crossing the railway line, which is where the danger area starts. We're going right up against the line, but not over it. So we can fly pretty close to the base. And as you can see, we've now stopped. We're not going any further across that railway line. We're going to stay on that safe side. And we're going to see what we can see from absolutely pushing this to the limit, to the legal limit of what you can get away with, with a drone. And as you can see, this is an interesting little facility with some army vehicles, a water tower, lots of shipping containers and it would appear even some old abandoned helicopters and this is on the east side of the base and you can see in the top right a little smokestack going there's a military helicopter dumped Looks like a little radar unit or something up above. Can you see that grey th gray thing with a little nipple on the top? Looks like radar. Hard to know what the rest of this stuff is, but I mean, this might be outside the base. This might be a farmyard for all I could tell. But that being said, once you pan across, look at this, look at the fences there. That's quite high security, and there's a lot of cameras. And then as you pan up, this is definitely on the uh, danger area now. And you can have a look at some of these things on Google Map photos. But this is 
watered down danger area and we're just running up and down the edge of that railway line now having a look here you can see compounded areas which look like they might be for chemical storage could be dangerous stuff like explosives chemicals flammable substances solvents and this is on the back of Porton Down itself and there you can see the massive car park and then Porton itself with double perimeter fences and a lot of the buildings there inside Porton including the major facilities now it is rumoured and by the way we, we can go up <laughs> to get a better view um, it is rumoured that there are underground facilities here I've heard this many times over the years very hard to get a confirmation on that even though a friend of mine said he actually went in several layers underground once and he was an animal rights protester and he got in and got underground and it's pretty shocking when you think about it that somebody could penetrate the security of this place and get into the underground bunkers it's one of those we need to see it with our own eyes to believe it but yeah so there are some patches in the landscape. As you can see, we haven't crossed the railway line, yeah, but there are patches in the landscape, which I don't know whether or not they're farmer stuff or whether or not somebody has been playing around with something there. But almost directly in the middle is where I'm parked with my car. You can see the car there. So let's take another look, pointing back in this direction. So this is our takeoff point, you've just got to be careful not to hit the trees. And up we go, and once you get a little bit of height, you just get that amazing view of Porton Down and this is where you can get extremely close and bear in mind that that railway line has a track beside it which you can walk down so even though you're on this side of the fence for Porton Down you can actually walk all the way along the edge of Porton Down itself the facility and take a look for yourself go and have a walk go and have a bike ride take your dog for a walk and walk the fence line you can really get that close so we've got a couple of little buildings leading in and as you can see my lens is now cleared up there's no mist on the lens anymore so that's uh, a lot sharper And here's a little building which it's kind of hard to see on Google Maps so we've zoomed it in so you can see it here we're just panning around what looks to be a trackway around the base and here we have some little standalone facilities which might be staging posts for them testing stuff on the plane a double security perimeter fence area obviously high security could contain explosives and this is facing towards the south at the moment on the north side of the railway line uh, you can see some of these patches which might be chemical burns from agricultural use um, we've now got the view back up into the base don't know what this little building is could be gas or water water mains So let's take a little look now and 
move our way up the railway line and closer towards the base itself. As long as we stay on this side of the railway line, we are okay. So let's get ourselves quite a bit closer. So just speed up the footage a little bit just to save time. And as we come back to normal speed and gain a little bit of height to make things easier to see in, you can see quite clear shots now of both facilities against each other. And when we say both facilities, we have one which is separated by a piece of land that one's further east and then we have the public health england which is up in the top right hand corner now so i believe these are kind of separately run this one we're looking at now is run by the ministry of defense so one can only guess what goes on in here whereas public health england might be dealing with covid stuff and various health related viruses the ministry of defense hmm possible germ weapons that could kill us all question mark so as we pan across the upper section at the top of the screen the old ready brown buildings i believe that's what's known as public health england and that has got a double security perimeter fence around it as well And that is considered to be the older part of the base. And you often see footage from the 1960s of people going in there. And this, some of this stuff in the lower left is slightly newer buildings. But as far as I'm aware, this is the first footage showing you the extents of the base from a drone with this amount of detail. You can obviously look on Google Earth, but you don't get this perspective. And those are the uh, the bunkers which have been modified recently. They're there shown on old maps, but they've had work done to put roofs on them and solar panels and some weird stuff. It's kind of hard to know, but looking back at other bits on the base. So it's a massive site absolutely colossal and as you can see we're well away from the railway line here so even though we're going closer to port and down we're actually staying a, a respectful distance away from the actual main base itself so zipping back quickly as my battery was a bit low so just to say it we're not taking any responsibility for where you go and what you do in that area it's quite likely that the drone areas will probably change at some point in the future because of maybe what I've done here with this drone, but I'm staying legal at the moment. So it would be advisable before you go to fly that you check what the drone restrictions or air restrictions are and uh, make yourself acquainted with those. I cannot be held responsible for what you do in the future and whether or not it is or is not legal. But this is about as good as you can get staying on the right side of the line so thanks for watching and watch the next video where we are really going to have some fun in a way that might not be advisable for you to do